MGTOW, be a cheap bastard. This video is about building wealth by being a cheap bastard. Now this video is inspired by a friend of mine named John. And I met John about 10 years ago. He's a little sort of Jewish looking guy. He wasn't Jewish, but he's just kind of this little slender Jewish looking guy. And, and I was just relentless on him because he literally was the cheapest bastard I had ever met in my life. This dude was so cheap that when we went to bars and I would offer to buy him a premium beer, the beer was on me, right? He wouldn't even let me spend three dollars on a pint for him. He would order the cheapest draft they had. Now the weirdest thing about him was although he was working a ten dollar an hour job as a maintenance guy at a medical facility, the dude always had multiple vehicles. It was quite odd. He was a pretty solid mechanic and, and, and these cars weren't junkers at all. And at one point he had nine vehicles. I counted them. I counted them twice. He had nine vehicles in and around his garage and around his house. Every single one of them was clean, started, ran, they were totally reliable. Every single one of them. Now, this was about 10 years ago, so at that time, I was completely the opposite of him. You know, I was, I was in the real estate field, I was making really good money, and, and I never thought about money. When we, we would go out riding our Harleys or go off-roading in our four-wheel drives, we would sometimes stop at bars or restaurants on a given Saturday, and I would order whatever I wanted. I would drink whatever I wanted. And the cost never mattered to me. Not John. Oh no. He would <laughs> he would sometimes bring his own beers with him on the trip. All right. And we're not talking premium bottles here. He would bring keystones. You know, not not keystone lights. Oh no. The full bodied keystone. <laughs> when he would eat at restaurants, he would always order something that was discounted. Always some kind of special and believe me I gave him hell for this and and he was always very good natured about it and so was I but I would call him a cheap bastard at every single opportunity and he would always smile and take it in stride he was really cool about it but you see he had a secret that I wasn't aware of until we were friends for a couple of years now let me reiterate John is a blue collar mechanic type guy now he's he, he when I was uh, his his buddy when we were living in the same town he was making 10 bucks an hour and he made 10 bucks an hour most of his life but this dude who I had teased relentlessly for years was the only man I knew who owned his home free and clear I had other buddies that were making two and three times the amount of money he was. They didn't have their homes paid for. I, I couldn't believe this when I found out. I, I almost didn't believe it. Of course, John just, he never lies. He never freaking lies. He can always take what he says to the bank. But the dude paid off his house because of exactly what I was teasing him for. For ch being a cheap bastard. You know, over those years, he really changed the way I looked at money. So here I'm, I'm going to give you a few things I saw him do that made all the differences in his finances. First, he used his hobby of working on cars to make himself side money. At one point, he, like I said, he literally had nine vehicles in his yard, and this wasn't just like a, an indulgence. He would buy these vehicles, and there might be something minor wrong with them, and he would fix them a little bit. And he, re he would use these vehicles for six months to a year. I remember one time he had this this uh, little geo tracker, but it had like it had been lifted and had monster ass tires on him. And we went out through this riverbed, and this thing was just amazing. He paid like thirty five hundred dollars for the thing. Ended up selling it like six months later for four grand, and ended up making five hundred bucks. I mean, this was typical of him. 
And so, you know, if you have a hobby that you can make a little side money, you know, that's definitely what he would do. He would do it usually on, on his Saturdays. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do it all weekend, but on Saturday he would spend, you know, a few hours fixing up or looking for vehicles. And, and then Sundays he would spend doing whatever he wanted. Number two, we, we all have little luxuries we like to treat ourselves to, right? And, 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 and John did too. For example, he just loved to drink beer. But like I, I mentioned before, he, he never drank the premium brands. I mean, you know, he would, if you buy like a, a, a case of Coors, I don't even know what they go for, versus a, a case of Keystone, there's maybe only 2 or $3 difference. But that 2 or $3 difference was important to John. And he drank Keystone proudly, which he insisted was a Coors product anyway, or something like that. He would. The point is, is he would have his luxury, but he would pay as little as possible for it. It was, um, as I look back, it was it was quite quite impressive. Number three, and this was the thing, you know, and I don't know if you can accept this or not. And and certainly at first I was not accepting of this, but John loved garage sales you know it was amazing he, he would get up most Saturday mornings and go out on a shopping adventure he would come back with some of the most amazing things electronics you know the most amazing things for the most amazing prices I mean the dude had all sorts of modern luxuries but paid almost nothing for all of it it was really quite impressive uh, number four, he would go out to dinner. You know, a lot of us like to go out and eat, but he would he would only go out a couple times a week. He would always go out on Fridays, and some and, and usually maybe a Saturday or Sunday he would go out. But he picked restaurants that were good, and that were cheap. And he he rarely varied from this. He liked this one restaurant in a local casino because he could have a couple of beers and a meal for under ten bucks. And that was that was typical John. You know if. If he were to have that same meal in another restaurant, he'd pay twenty bucks. But he was very, uh, very good about that. He would, he would find places that he could, he get in and out for fairly cheap, but still, you know, still not feel, not feel like he was like living like a poor man. Number five, he cooked a lot at home, and every night he would have a specific dish he would cook, like pork tenderloins on Tuesdays, hamburger subs on Fridays, etc. And uh, I've talked about cooking before, but that's a big way he saved a lot of money. And finally, number six, he was very conscientious about energy use in his home. He would turn off every light that was not absolutely necessary. He would he wouldn't set the temperature to 72 if uh, you know if he was heating his home. He just set it to 65 or 67 or whatever. He was always thinking about every little way he could save money. You know, I bugged him for, for years to get a cell phone. And the dude, he tried it, he, you know, because he, he wanted to, you know, reach me and stuff. Uh, and he knew I was always out and about, and, and he was out and about. And that lasted for about a month. He, he just, he, if he could get by without spending money on something, he would do it. And, and these are the, all the little things that, at the end of the day, add up. And the the dude pays his his house off on a blue collar salary. Again, making half or a third of the money of some of my other friends, and they didn't have their houses paid off. And now now, this may not be appealing to you. Everything I've described, especially if you're a younger guy, and you have a decent job with no attachments, it's easy to be like I was. And quite frankly, I was very wasteful. Now, being MIGTO frees you up from having to, to impress, right? From having to buy a beautiful car and having to live in a beautiful home with lots of expensive luxuries because there's really no reason to get women to like you. And that's the strategy, and that's why men buy those things, is to, to get women to like them. And say what you like about all his little ways that I've described here. Believe me, I gave him hell for it. But, Again, he was the only guy I knew at his age who had his house paid off. It was it blew my mind. Being a cheap bastard is the way to go, in my opinion. And I would recommend giving it a go. Live cheap, build wealth, be free. That's what I'm thinking. Thanks for watching.